Um, China has actually decided they've come to some agreement with the Solomon Islands, right? And the basic background of this is there's been some anti-China riots in the Solomon Islands, and the central government wants to work with China to contain these, something like that. I, I, that's what I heard, right? But we're going to go through it together, right? So in the Solomon Islands, and if you don't know where the Solomon Islands is, it's to the northeast of Australia. And, you know, Australia considers it its turf, right? But the Solomon Islands is a sovereign country, and they made a deal with, um, with China. Did you see they made a cope stream? I have no idea, right? So keep that in mind, all right? That's, so the Solomon Islands is about northwest of Australia. It's in that region of the world. China might make a base in the Solomon Islands. Just one base. Just one base, okay? So check, check this outrageous fucking news out. So the U.S. won't rule out military action if China establishes a base in the Solomon Islands. So, I mean, I don't know if y'all have caught on to the irony of this yet. I don't know if the irony is uh, catching up to you yet here, but um, see, the thing is, the thing is, actually, remember, remember when Russia said Ukraine, which was a fucking country that bordered Russia, that has uh, that unlocks a lot of geostrategic vulnerabilities for Russian territory in the event of a war. I mean, which has always been in Russia's sphere, and like that's Ukraine. It's always been part of Russia's sphere of influence, and. Ukraine joining NATO, I mean, that would really put Russia in danger, right? So, Russia can't tell Ukraine you can't join NATO. Russia's unjust for interfering in Ukraine's sovereign right to self-determination. But China can't build a fucking military base in the Solomon Islands, which is not only does not border the U.S., but it's, it's on the other fucking side of the world. It's not even on the same side of the world as us. It's literally on the other side of the world, halfway across the fucking world. And we are saying that we're going to take military action if China establishes a base on the Solomon Islands. I mean, that is fucking insane. I mean, we used to have the Monroe Doctrine. I don't know if you remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. And in some of these debates, people did bring that up to talk about America's hypocrisy when it comes to the Ukraine crisis. But this goes above and beyond that, that fucking Monroe Doctrine. This is some, it's halfway across the world, 4,000 miles away, northeast of Australia. And the U.S. is willing to go to war and, and cause literally World War III if China establishes a base in the Solomon Islands. I mean, that's actually fucking crazy, right? So, um, so they're saying a security deal between the countries presented a potential regional security implications for the U.S. and other allies at the ambassador, Daniel Crichtenbrink, um, was part of a U.S. delegation to the Pacific country. He said the U.S. team, which included the National Security Council coordinator, blah, 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 shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Um, we wanted to outline for our friends in the Solomons what our concerns were, right? Um, of course, we have to respect, we have respect for the Solomon Island sovereignty, but <laughs> we also wanted to let them know that if steps were taken to establish a de facto permanent military presence, power projecting capabilities, or a military installation, we would have significant concerns and would very naturally respond to those concerns. When asked what the response could involve, he said, look, I'm not going to speculate and I'm not in a position to talk about what the United States may or may not do in a situation. All right. So it's basically World War Three. They're basically threatening nuclear war in World War Three over the fucking Solomon Islands. Right. And pressed on whether he would rule out prospective U.S. military action against Solomon Islands. Um, and if he was comfortable. With so this is what the Australian prime minister said. He said it's a red line for Australia. What is, does Australia think it's Russia or something? Like, who the fuck does Australia think it is? Does Australia think it's Russia? Does Australia really think it's in a position to be establishing red lines for anyone in any capacity? Who the fuck does Australia think it fucking is They're establishing a red line? Oh, wow, we're all so scared of you. Tough, tough Australia, right? Australia is like a big superpower like Russia. The Solomon Islands are a red line, despite the fact that Australia is like, what, a, a hundred year old fucking country um, 
with no roots in the region, no historical relationships with the Solomon Island, no civilizational relationship with the Solomon Island. And had, there's no such thing as an Australian big space. Who the fuck does Australia think it is projecting all this power as if the Australians have any geopolitical leverage whatsoever besides the United States? So what this motherfucking Prime Minister Scott Morrison is really doing is that he's threatening China with our guns. He's threatening China with our military, our nukes, and our fucking soldiers. Hey, you motherfucking kangaroo hopping motherfuckers, why don't you have your own red line? Meaning if you get involved with China, you take care of it, and we're not going to have your fucking back. How about that, Australia? Motherfucking Australia. Y'all don't pay my taxes, bitch. You don't pay taxes, Australia. My fucking country's military is supposed to go and protect you. You don't pay my motherfucking taxes. You don't do shit for our fucking country. You should fend for yourself, Australia. You don't give anything to us. Nothing. And you're going to fucking go and threaten China and threaten World War III using our military, our soldiers, our guns, our weapons, our nukes. That is fucking pathetic. Truth is... Australia wants to saber rattle with China. If Australia had to face China alone, China, they would stand no chance against. I have to be careful what I say on YouTube, apparently, but they would not stand a chance against China. They would not stand a chance. I mean, that ho, oh, those kangaroos. Let's just, oh, I gotta say, those kangaroos, those kangaroos, all I gotta say is, uh, I wonder what a radioactive kangaroo looks like. I wonder what a radioactive koala bear looks like. Don't be threatening China, you hiding behind the United States, Australia. You don't pay my taxes. You don't pay our taxes, Australia. So in a statement, the Biden administration said the U.S. would respond accordingly if China was allowed to establish a long-term presence on the island. So, so let me get this straight. Russia is this horrible aggressor because Russia had a red line for Ukraine. A country that bordered Russia and had the utmost geostrategic significance as far as Russia's ability to defend its own security is concerned. That is absolutely fucking crazy. That is literally crazy. Okay? Because, I'll tell you why it's crazy. Russia has been cancelled in Western societies. I got banned from Twitch. I lost my job. I lost my income. I don't even know what I'm going to do as far as my fucking financial security is concerned because... I mean, I do. I mean, I'm banking on the fact that I grow more so I could be able to keep doing this shit. I'm not even certain if I'm going to be able to keep streaming and doing what I've been fucking doing. I might have to go find another fucking job because of everything that I fucking lost from Twitch. Right. So I'm in that very precarious situation right now. And that was just because I was not. Uh, that's just because I was refusing to buy the narratives they were painting about Russia, that Russia's the bad guy, Russia's the most evil fucking thing in the world. So I lost my job because I wasn't willing to get on board with condemning Russia and demonizing Russia because Russia considered Ukraine its fucking red line. Streamlabs banned me. Stream Elements fucking banned me. But you're telling me the United States has the right to do the same fucking thing to the Solomon Islands just because China wants to establish a base there? Now, keep in mind, it's not like China is, is creating a military pact with the Solomon Islands where they're entering into a security alliance where they have some kind of Article 5. That's not what China's doing with the Solomon Islands. They're just planning on, on having some kind of military presence or cooperation or base there. And, and Australia is saying this is a red line and that Biden is going to respond accordingly if that fucking happens. But, but, but you will not get banned or canceled if you speak out about that. You won't, you won't get banned. You won't get canceled. Stream Elements isn't going to do shit. Streamlabs isn't going to do shit because what? Because, because what? Really, what is your fucking justification? I mean, you could just say, uh, we are Western chauvinists, and, you know, if you support the enemies of the, the globalist deep state, you deserve to be ostracized, but they'll never be that explicit. They always say, oh, we believe in fairness, and we believe in the right for nations to have self-determination, and Russia's acting like such an aggressor. Really? Really? Hey, I can join Rockfin? 
I mean, no, it's not that. It's that I have to make it a full-time job, right? If I stream as a full-time job, I got to be able to pay bills, right? And, you know, so far, uh, I don't know. It's not, It doesn't really seem that sustainable so far. So I'm, I'm banking that I can regain what I lost from Twitch in terms of viewership and engagement and all that kind of shit. I genuinely don't know. I really don't know what my fucking future is going to be. And it's all because of that Russia shit, right? So when I look at the news and I see what the U.S. is saying about the fucking Solomon Islands 4,000 miles away that has nothing to do... First of all, we don't have a right to the... Sol we, we have no history with the Solomon Islands. We have no civilizational history. We have no ties with the Solomon Islands. It doesn't border us. It's not a threat to our soil in any meaningful, immediate capacity whatsoever. And we are out here threatening World War III over it. What the fuck is going on with that, right? So we're going to invade the Solomon Islands, and that's okay. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the worst war crime in the history of humanity, and it's it's the worst thing that's ever happened in the world. It's the biggest tragedy that's ever fucking happened in the world. Why aren't more people fucking talking about this shit? I really don't know. I really don't know why more people aren't talking about this shit, right? So it has a lot to do also with the Australian Prime Minister's campaign... That's why he's acting like such a tough guy and he's saber rattling. So uh, I just look, look, I'm sorry, Australia. So here you got the Solomon Islands right here. And this is China. And they're working out a deal. And the Solomon Islands says, no, I mean, China, Australia says, no, it's not possible. Hey, Australia, y'all are foreigners in that region. I'm sorry to tell you that, Australia. Y'all are foreigners in that region. And... I'm not saying you have to be expelled. You can get along and, and build something in that region and you can have a coexistence. And sure, right? I'm not saying all the Anglo people have to be kicked out of Australia. All I'm saying is that y'all are fucking foreigners there. So for you guys to, to have all this fucking bravado and act like you're going to boss around two powers that have that are pretty historically constituted in that fucking region, I mean... Not powers, but two countries that are pretty historic. They have roots in the fucking region. It's like, you know, Australia, I don't know who the fuck. It's like, you're the you're the new guy in the region. You don't have a right to be bossing people around, you stupid fuck. You don't have a right to boss China around Australia. You've existed for like a fucking hundred years or some shit. And you are a fucking prison island. You're going to compare yourself to China? And you're going to try to challenge China? A thousands of years old civilization? This is like if China decided to interfere in Europe's affairs. What if China just said some shit about, like, Switzerland or some shit? Oh, uh, Switzerland, you can't do that. China can't do that shit. What is, China doesn't have any roots in Europe, because that's Europe, right? And Europeans came to Australia, the British came to Australia, and they decided to become guests in the region, and now they're trying to act like they fucking rule the place and they're going to boss everybody around and they're going to decide and dictate what kind of agreements people come to. Uh, absolutely fucking not. Absolutely fucking not. Who the fuck are you, Australia? Who the fuck are you, Australia? Australia can get, sustain hundreds of millions of people. I don't fucking know. But, you know, Australia is acting a lot like a rogue state. And I think China should take that into consideration because the way Australia has been behaving with all of its threats and all of its belligerence and all that kind of shit, it's kind of like it's kind of like a rogue state. You know, it's kind of like this this like mean state that's just threatening everybody and it's causing a big problem. You know, you know how they talked about Saddam that way. You know how they talked about, you know, um, Syria and Iran that way and stuff. They, especially they talked about Iraq that way, that it's this rogue state. Well, I kind of think that's how China should treat Australia, if you get what I'm saying here. I mean, I really, really, really think that. I'm not even kidding. I really, really think that Scott Morrison should be treated like, you know, the Saddam Hussein of the region. If you, if you catch my drift, right, I can't say too much actually, believe it or not, on YouTube, but I really think China should take into account that there's this kind of axis of evil, right, with Australia, and it's just this menace to democracy and menace to peace and stability. It's causing all these regional fucking problems and threatening all these fucking people. That's a really big problem. That's a really big problem, right? I mean, we wouldn't tolerate a country like that acting that way in our fucking front door, would we? I don't see why China should. I really don't. I really don't. But here's the beautiful thing. Red line or not, secrecy over the China Solomon Islands pact peaks U.S. suspicion. So stopping short of saying red line, the U.S. warned the Solomon Islands about a U.S. response to China have a de facto military presence. So we already covered that news. But this is the kind of beautiful thing. 
So China is still, despite all those threats and despite all that saber rattling and despite all that fucking bluffing that they're doing, guess what? China is actually still very likely to deploy troops in the Solomon Islands, according to the Australian minister. So the home minister, this, was, this is from today, this is breaking from today. So they made all these threats, but despite that, China's still deploying its troops on the islands. <laughs> so China's very likely to put troops in the Solomon Islands after signing a contentious security deal with the Pacific nation. So you think China gives a fuck about America or Australia's threats? No, they don't. They don't give a fuck. They're going to call their bluff and, and they're going to still do whatever the fuck they want. China doesn't give a fuck about what America or Australia is saying. Simple. And by the way, guys, we people living in America, we are being embarrassed on the international stage. We are being shamed on the inner. We look stupid as fuck by this leadership. This leadership is giving all these empty threats and they look stupid as fuck when China cucks them like this. And it makes all of us look bad. Imagine if we had a leadership that didn't decide that they were going to interfere uh, in, in China's sphere of influence. And we just, okay, well, that's China's turf. Well, obviously, we're not going to fucking go to war over China's turf, right? Imagine if we had a leadership that was smart enough to know that. Instead, we have this embarrassing leadership that makes us look like cucks all over the fucking world continually. I mean, Putin has cucked the shit out of America's prestige and leadership. And nobody respects America anymore. I mean, Putin is literally laughing at America. I mean, we had these sanctions against Russia, and then we're paying the price because we pay higher we pay higher prices for gas. We're paying higher prices for food. And keep an eye on that food thing, by the way, because I already warned you about that last year. And might I add, it's gonna get really bad in a very short period of time. But um, you know, that whole thing backfired. Europe is still paying for its gas in rubles, and America looks dumb as fuck, right? We've been, we've been saber-rattling all this shit about Ukraine, this, Ukraine. We're not going to do shit about Ukraine. We're not going to do fucking shit about Ukraine. We have no business in Ukraine. We have no business whatsoever in Ukraine, right? So we're not going to do shit about that, and, and, and Russia's still doing what it's doing in Ukraine, and we can't do a damn thing about it. So we shouldn't have opened our mouth in the first place since we're not actually going to do shit about it, right?